Hi everyone. In this video, I'm looking at the debate between reductionism and holism. When thinking about the mind and trying to understand cognitive processes, is it better to zoom in on the tiny details or just step back and view the bigger picture? Let's explore that question. When approaching a problem, zooming in on the details is called reductionism. It involves in breaking down complex systems into their simpler constituent parts to understand the whole. And it's based on the belief that the properties and behavior of a system can be fully understood by examining its component parts. Imagine you're looking at a complex machine and you decide to understand it by examining each screw gear and wire separately. In psychology, reductionism follows a similar approach, breaking down mental processes into their simplest elements. When it comes to psychological issues and debates, reductionists might focus on specific neurons, uh, genes or brain regions to understand human behavior. But while reductionism offers detailed insights. It's like reading only one page of a story. You get the details, but you might miss the plot. Now, let's talk about holism. Holism posits that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. This approach emphasizes the importance of the relationships and interactions between the components of a system. Holism is like stepping back to view the entire landscape instead of inspecting each tree. In psychology, a holistic approach might explore how our experiences, culture, and emotions interact and influence how we remember. Holism offers a more complete picture than reductionism, but sometimes it can be too broad, overlooking the finer points of individual components. So how how do we balance these perspectives? Well, we can think of reductionism and holism as being like two lenses. One zooms in and the other zooms out. They both offer valuable insights, but in different ways. For instance, understanding the influence of genes in, say, depression is very important, but so is understanding the effects of interactions with our social environment. Let's consider a real-world scenario. Imagine someone experiencing memory loss. A reductionist approach might examine brain scans or genetic factors, while a holistic approach might also look at their life experiences, stress levels, and social support. Both perspectives can provide us with a fuller understanding and better ways to help we're going to do a lot better at understanding psychological issues if we marry reductionism and holism, as it were, and look at challenges through both the zoom and wide-angle lenses that I spoke about a moment ago. You can also think of it like this. In the puzzle of the human mind, every piece matters, but how they connect is just as important. Thank you for watching. Hope you found that new sport. See you next time.